you're gonna break into Boxing with Billy C. It began as a podcast, went live on the net, and transformed into a full-blown empire across the web, on Fight Now TV, and on radio stations around the world. It's the only daily boxing talk radio show on the planet, hosted by the only guy with the balls to do it. Many have stepped into the ring. Many have tried to take the belt. And one by one, they fall. Another victim of the undisputed heavyweight champion of Boxing Talk Radio. Talking Boxing with Billy C is on now. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. We're coming to you live. From the Billy C. Studio in Lake George, New York, I'm Bill Calagero, and it's time for Talking Box on Billy C. Good morning, good day, good evening. Whenever you listen, I hope you're doing all right. The show is being brought to you in part by Camp and Aaron Tomkovich. If you're looking for a lawyer, use the ones that keep my ass out of trouble. That is Camp and Aaron Tomkovich. Give him a call today, 845-221-4099. 845-221-4099. Let Camp and Aaron Tomkovich Knock out your legal problem. 845-221-4099. The show's also being brought to you in part by my friends down at the Halftime Bar and Grill, Route 9, South Glens Falls, New York. If you like uh, cool people to hang with, drink specials all the time, live entertainment on Friday and Saturday nights, and great food to stuff your face with. Well, you're going to love the Halftime Bar and Grill. Give them a call for uh, directions or reservations, 518-792-4869, 518-792-4869. Um, we, uh, uh, I don't have any cough drops today, <laughs> so I'm going to be talking like this by the end of the show. So uh, I know a lot of people go, man, what, what the hell, man? I hear you do, with the cough drop in the mic on the podcast, you know, because the podcast, subs- the premium podcast subscribers, you know, they're, they're the cool ones. You know, they, uh, they hear, uh, every little imperfection, but, uh, but nonetheless, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see, uh. Uh, the damn secretary uh, never picked him up for me, and, and damn it, she's going to get fired. I'll tell you that right now. She, she doesn't, she, she, she's not doing her job anyway. You know, but uh, anyway, we got some emails, um, and, uh, you know, we're complaining. Uh, we got uh, Chatty, uh, my man Chatty is in the chat room, and uh, we're waiting uh, uh, to get that uh, that room filled. And, and this week we've been... Uh, uh, we've been getting uh, some issues. We've been having some issues uh, with the uh, with the stream, and uh, we're looking for another streaming company. I, I can't stand it when uh, when that happens, and uh, it's been 
happening, and I apologize for uh, some of the live viewers that uh, watch through the uh, internet. Uh, so we we uh, apologize for that. That's why you got to become a premium podcast subscriber and uh, enjoy uh, all of that stuff uh, because uh, that's the way to get the show. Um, uh, the way, uh, you know, it should be. You can watch the replays on YouTube. It comes up uh, later in the day. But the premiums, they get it first. Hey, by the way, I had all of the statistics in front of me, but I left them way over there. And uh, that's the uh, poll question this week. Who would you rather see Tyson Fury fight? A lot of good choices up there. Well, right now, the from the best of my recollection, the, the leading candidate, is uh, Bryant Jennings, which I, that was my vote. I voted for Bryant Jennings, so uh, a lot of you guys agree with me. The next one in line, uh, as far as I recall, is David Hay. And then uh, it's tied, actually, to go directly to Vlad Klitschko, Chris Ariola, and um, uh, somebody else, uh, which I can't uh, uh, think of right this second. And then, uh, uh, let's see, it was Chris Ariola, Vladimir Klitschko, and, and uh, uh, someone else. But... Uh, uh, and then nobody has voted uh, to see him uh, not fight at all. So a lot of you guys uh, uh, like him. And no one wants to see him fight Kubrat uh, Pulov. So uh, check it out. Who would, who, do you, who would you rather see him fight? Uh, there's a couple of good choices up there. So check that one out. Cast your vote. All that happy stuff. Um, we got some emails to read. We got Marty Mulcahy uh, scheduled to join us in a little bit. So uh, we'll be uh, chatting with him about uh, uh, the fights from uh, last week as well as uh, uh, the big fight scheduled for this weekend. And uh, speaking of, uh, I I promised the uh, challenge uh, members, the Billy C. Challenge members, uh, that uh, I would give the winner. Well, I'm going to give it uh, before we break down the fights today. Uh, We do have the winner. I did not uh, post it on the website yet, did not get a chance. Apologize for that, but I will give you the winners uh, of uh, who won uh, uh, for the month of March. So could it be another England winner? You know, geez, I hate when that happens. <laughs> Not, I, I love my British boxing fans. The only reason why I hate when it happens is because every time I ship a prize over there, it costs me a million dollars. But uh, uh, anyway, XD Raven says, uh, a prime Tyson was never tested as he was fighting faded fighters or just average fighters during his era. Uh, it was weak. I think Tyson will always struggle against the tall heavyweights like Vitaly Klitschko or Lennox Lewis. Everyone always says about a prime Tyson, uh, but the reality is he never fought anyone and his resume is weak. I think he had all the tools to be the best, but he never proved it, so we will never know. Um, I don't know, man. I, 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 don't, I don't buy that XD Raven. I, you know, I mean, that's been an issue. People have said that. Um, First of all, when he fought Lennox Lewis, uh, he fought Lennox Lewis after he had already faded. All right, so uh, we don't know about that. All right, that's number one. Number two, you know, faded fighters. Uh, if you're referring to Larry Holmes, uh, you know, Michael Spinks, uh, you know, guys like that. Um, you know, I, you know, what, what are you going to do? I mean, first of all, Larry Holmes was uh was a champion you know before michael spinks beat him so he he was kind of active uh mike tyson beat everybody that was available uh we used that uh excuse for lennox lewis when he was a champ we used that excuse for vladimir and vitaly klitschko right now um we have to use that excuse for mike tyson you know remember something you know maybe they weren't uh you know top top names uh, as far as uh, boxing uh, lore goes. But, you know, uh, those guys, those Greg Pages, those Tim Witherspoon, not that he fought Witherspoon, but uh, Greg Page and, and uh, some of those guys that were champions, um, he beat them. He also beat the Pinkland Thomases and the uh, Bone Crusher Smiths. I mean, these, these guys were the champions. You know, the, the uh, 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 Tony T. And T-, T. Tucker. I mean, listen. He beat all of the fighters that were there, every one of them. So I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to, to, you know, isolate and say, well, you know, he didn't have anybody to fight, so he's not that good. Um, listen, we, we've all agreed on one thing 
throughout uh you know boxing uh, you know throughout the history that at least when we discuss it is that you can only really uh, look at a fighter and and make sure that he fought everyone that was available to him at his time during his time uh, uh when uh, when he fought we can't say oh well there was no one for him to fight or you know if he fought this guy or if he fought that guy you know i mean you uh you really can't do that but uh Anyway, I got another thought from uh, XD Raven, but that one's going to have to wait until after this. If you're in upstate New York and you need a trucking company, then you need Roselli Enterprises. Roselli Enterprises is trucking at its finest. They have it all. Dump trucks, dump trailers, walk-in floors, flatbeds, flow boys, tankers, loaders, and a full line of roll-off containers for any job, big or small. Roselli Enterprises is also the source for all your sand, gravel, and topsoil needs. Visit them on the web at RoselliTrucking.com or call 315-433-5115. That's 315-433-5115 and tell them Billy C sent you. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. From world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to fightnow.com. We've got a great matchup tonight. Fighting out of the left corner is the number one ranked contender. No, he is not. I'm sorry, but who are you? I am the ideal computer. I am programmed to provide only fair and unbiased boxing rankings. This fighter is the number 15 ranked contender. Fair and unbiased boxing rankings? That's a new concept. Actually, it is not. The IDO has provided unbiased computerized rankings for many years. Well, we've still got a great fight tonight, folks. In the left corner is the number 15 ranked contender. The IBO, the champion of integrity. Learn more at IBOboxing.com. Check out BillyCBoxing.com now, or feel the wrath of the mighty mustache. Oh, that hurts. Why are you doing that to my face? I hate you. I hate you. That's BillyCBoxing.com. Consider this your warning. As a young boy, all Billy C dreamed about was one day having his own catchphrase and we're back and we're back one boy one dream one day everyone will say and we're back 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 catchphrase coming soon to a theater near you And we're back. You're listening to the Talk About Your Police Show. You're watching the replay on LDL TV, and uh, I'm going to get to some news uh, about LDL TV in a little bit. Uh, my man Chatty's in the chat room. Uh, he's telling me, he emailed me a couple of days ago. I, I know I never got the email. You know, he's the only one that I seem to have email issues with. Um, you, you better check your uh, outgoing servers or something, bro, because... Uh, I get a hundred emails a day, and uh, you know at least from one from just from that one account. So uh, um, are you uh, something's up. I, I don't know. He was having trouble receiving my emails, and now I'm having trouble receiving his. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I apologize for that. But uh, anyway, XD Raven says uh, on the subject of underrated heavyweights, you could throw in Jimmy Young. Man, he could box, dude. I couldn't agree with you more. Jimmy Young was uh, one of the most. Uh, underrated fighters uh, in the history of the heavyweight division, in my opinion. Uh, I, I keep telling everybody, you know, that fight uh, that he had with Muhammad Ali, which I watched, um, really, you know, yesterday I was talking about, you know, how uh, back in the day some people loved Ali, some people hated him. You know, after watching a fight like the Jimmy Young fight, you know, to me, I, I couldn't understand. I, I couldn't understand why, you know, as a kid, man, I just couldn't understand why, he didn't win that fight. Why? Why you, J Jimmy Young didn't get the nod? You know, in my opinion, I, I thought that, uh, uh, you know, I, I thought that he clearly won. 
You know, and I've even had discussions with people over the years, and and I tell you what, it's funny. It's almost like a a Hagler uh, uh, Hagler uh, Leonard fight because you know I I get mixed feelings about the fight. You know, I get people saying, "Oh, all, all Jimmy Young did was run and hang over the ropes and do this and do that." And I, I was like, "Man, he counterpunched Ali. I thought he landed uh, the better shots. I, I thought Ali ran around a lot." So, um, but uh, I agree with uh, XD Raven on uh, Jimmy Young. That's for sure. Uh, he says, uh, "I can't stand David Hay, uh, but he would beat everyone apart from the Klitschko brothers. I'm sure Hay would beat Hellenius, uh, uh, Fury, Wilder, Adamak, and the rest." I would like to see Brian Jennings step up, though, as he has something uh, which he has something which I like. I agree with Billy that uh, Hay needs to beat someone in the top ten to get Vitaly. He can't just talk himself into a shot again. Also, I find Roy Jones somewhat entertaining. Um, you know, Roy Jones uh, could bring uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, positive uh, things to to a broadcast if he would stop. Uh, you know, talking about himself. You know, I, I think the problem with Roy is Roy's having a hard time letting go of the fact that his his days are over inside the ring, and I think sometimes that what co- that's what comes out of his mouth. He, he's trying to make himself relevant uh, with, uh, with what the action that he's seeing. Um, as far as uh, as far as uh, David Hay, um, listen, I, I'm not so sure he beats. Uh, Fury, I'm not. Um, you know, we'll have to uh, wait and see uh, about that. Um, I, you know, I, I would like to see him fight uh, Adamak. I, I think that's a tough fight for him. Uh, Brian Jennings is a fight I really like. Um, you know, I, I you know I, I agree that that you know he does possess the talent, but you know, just like uh, XD Raven says here, you can't just give him the the pass. He can't just mouth his way to a title just because we say he's got talent you know there's a lot of fighters out there that you look at and you say oh yeah he's got talent that doesn't mean they get anointed as being a great fighter i mean adrian bronner is a great example you know he shows talent in one fight next thing you know everybody's you know putting him in the hall of fame and you know he he really hasn't done anything yet you know but uh um you know i will uh we'll see what uh uh, happens. Yeah, Chatty, I, I did get that email. He's asking me about the uh, Steel Dragon Mask. Yes, I got that email. I'm sorry. Um, we uh, we read that email uh, yesterday, on yesterday's show, as a matter of fact. So, uh, yeah, we, we got that one, man. You you must have missed it. It must have been when the stream was down. I don't know. I thought you were a premium podcast. If you're a premium guy, go back and play it, man. It's uh, It was on yesterday's show. Uh, and I don't have the answer for it. I'm trying to get uh, one of our uh, trivia guys like Henry Haskup to uh, give us uh, the lowdown on the uh, uh, on the uh, dragon mask. So uh, uh, we're not uh, we're not sure about that. Uh, Marcus Otavio says uh, I think Nonito Donaire against Rigondeaux will be a much better fight than many expect. I I pretty much think that most people think it's going to be a good fight. Um, I, I think it's a good test for both of the fighters. I, I love the fight. I love the fight. I, I too agree with you, uh, Marcus. I think it's going to be a good fight, but I, but I'm kind of thinking that people are expecting it to be a good fight. He says uh, Donaire doesn't jab enough. Uh, Rigo's defense is very good, and if Donaire doesn't use his jab effectively to set up uh, his power shots and just throws bombs, he could get countered. Rigo has the power too, as we all know. Uh, this should be a very competitive fight. Boxing. Uh, wins on the 13th um i i i i i yeah, 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 yeah. i uh am waiting to see something with donaire I, and, and don't get me wrong donaire is a very talented fighter I, we all see that and just like i was saying before you know just because we see all this talent have we really seen it tested yet i think we're going to see it tested against Reagan now and I, I, I agree with uh, uh, Marcus's points. You know, if he doesn't fight smart, if he just goes in there to try and pick his shots and, and make a quick, uh, quick night of it, um, you know, he, he, could, he is going to be susceptible to the counter. However, one thing that sticks out in my mind, we saw Rigondeau get, get rocked several times in his last fight, um, the one in Vegas against the, uh, the Filipino kid. And, um, I, you know, he, he was hurt. He was clearly hurt. 
and and I, you know the question is is Donier have the same pop um, as uh, as as that that former opponent, which his name uh, escapes me right now. He just recently uh, won uh, the muscle bound uh, kid. Uh, oh, I can't think of his name right now. But uh, um, anyway, uh, the bottom line is I, I think Donaire does have the pop, and he's got the hand speed um, to uh, uh, to to hurt uh, Rigandau. Rigandau's not uh, you know because Rigandau's problem is that he has a tendency to to fight lazy sometimes. And, and what I mean by that, not lazy like a Helena's lazy, but lazy not, you know, throwing enough punches and just doing enough things, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to be a good fight. I think it's going to really put in perspective where both fighters are right now. So uh, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, he says, uh, I've been hearing the hay... Uh, that that uh, I've been hearing that Hay is rumored to uh, be fighting uh, Manuel Char, Pulov, or Boystov. I certainly don't see Boystov going four rounds with David Hay, uh, so that's an easy win because Boystov has the uh, has the head and upper body movement of a paraplegic. Um, Boystov uh, hasn't really improved much. I, I agree with uh, Marcus there, um, and he's kind of small. I think that uh, Pulov would be a win for David. Hay. I, listen, I saw Pulov fight, and and he's not that good. He's he's a guy that's big and stuff, but he might be tailored for for Hay. You see, Hay's got to fight a big enough guy to show that he's going to be competitive against uh, Klitschko. He can't go after a small guy like Boystov, in my opinion, and then say, "See, uh, I'm ready." Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Char. Really. I mean, I don't want to see that one, but I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I, I want to see. I, I told you, anyone in my top 15, if you go on BillyCBoxing.com and look under the uh, uh, rankings, anyone in our top 15, uh, I would like to see uh, uh, David Hay fight. Uh, Bigavax says, David Hay quit against Vladimir. He's a quitter, and he should be treated as such. He's also a fraud. Uh, because the fight uh, was a pay-per-view in the U.K., and he ripped his U.K. fans off. He says, I'm not an Amir Khan fan, but you got to respect this guy uh, with as much heart as he has, even though he doesn't fight smart. I give him and Carl Frotch huge respect because they're real fighters. They always give it their all, win or lose, and seek out the best there. Uh, seek out the best uh, out there, uh, yet uh, David Hay arguably has more fans than both. Good point. Uh, David Hay uh, definitely doesn't seek the best out there, uh, with the exception of uh, you know trying to get himself the money fight against the Klitschkos. Um, but um, but yeah, maybe he does have more fans. I don't know. Could it be the division? You think it's the vi division? Maybe I don't know. Um, I have another email that we're going to uh, wait um, and uh, uh, read uh, after we get Marty on. Um, the reason why is because uh, it's from my man Kieran. That's not the reason, but he's got a comment uh, that yesterday I said, you know, I was kind of saying about the younger fight fans and that what scares me is they accept things uh, that boxing is doing right now. Um, you know, like these interim belts and the sweet science uh, definition, blah, blah, blah. And... Um, you know, I, I didn't realize how it must have sounded. And Kieran put it in perspective of exactly how it sounded. And I want to get his points across because uh, uh, he's right. You know, uh, he's basically blaming it uh, the way that the state of boxing is. He's blaming it on me, not me personally, but my generation, my generation. You know, uh, the generation that... that you know, uh, started the decline, uh, and you could go prior to me, prior to us, my 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 old age, my old ass generation. You know, uh, and, and he makes some great points that I'm going to talk about. Also, coming up a little later, we got um, uh, the uh, results from uh, Broadway Boxing last night. If you have uh, the Fight Now channel, uh, you would have uh, been able to see that. Um, also, uh, we got some uh, fight results from. Uh, uh, Australia and a, and a fighter that's going to be on uh, the card that we're doing next weekend. Um, we uh, will talk about. 
Uh, I also have uh, some <laughs> some interesting news uh, out of Florida uh, about the former uh, Florida uh, boxing commissioner. Um, we got a, a real good fight uh, added to uh, uh, the Josito Lopez and uh, uh, Marcos Medina matchup. Um, we have a couple of other uh, fights that have been announced. I also got uh, an issue with uh, uh, the WBC that I want to talk about. Again, they're, they're appalled at how the uh, AIBA uh, or the World Series of Boxing uh, is conducting themselves where they're actually trying to monopolize the sport and only look at the va- and only giving value to their own kind and uh, uh, you know it's the same thing as what Suleiman and the WBC is doing and every other sanctioning body uh, he's got some issues with them that uh, I'm going to talk about so uh, we'll see what uh, see what that's about and also I want to remind everyone about the uh, South Senecola show uh, and uh, the uh, the other one that we're going to be doing on Saturday from the M- Miami uh, um, Casino. And I, I want to give you guys all one other thing before we take a break. Um, you know how we're always saying call your uh, local television provider, whether it's Satellite Dish or Cable, to get the Fight Now channel? Well, you know, when you ask them about the Fight Now channel, adding it to your sports channel lineup, if they don't have it, in other words, if they don't have it, you got to use the wording because a lot of times these – uh, these people that are answering the phone at the customer service, they don't, they don't know what's going on. They're just, they're just you know, looking at your account. If they don't have the channel available right now, then you've got to ask them. The wording you need to use is you want to request the channel to be added to their sports channel lineup. You've got to request the channel, and then they physically put in a request to your carrier, and then that will get the ball uh, rolling a little quicker. So uh, we were wondering about wording. We got it. And speaking about getting, we got to take a break. When I come back, Marty Mulcahy is scheduled to join us. I'll be right back. Are you ready, America? Then let's get it on with Fight Now TV. It's time, fight fans. Your channel has arrived. All the fights, all the names, all the action. From world-class boxing events to mixed martial arts showdowns and other combat sports matchups, Fight Now TV delivers the hits and more. Call your television provider and tell them you want to get it on with Fight Now TV. For more details, go to FightNow.com. Broadcasting in all corners of the globe. On the web and radio. He would scoff at a stretch of that man, I would think. You're listening to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. From upstate New York in the good old U.S. of A. Boxing is here to stay because we are here to stay. The best two hours of boxing talk on the airwaves. Hey, fight fans. Check out KOFantasyBoxing.com. KO Fantasy Boxing is boxing's only trademarked fantasy game. Check it out, www.kofantasyboxing.com. Select your own gym, your own fighters. Track them through a season that can last from three months to a year, depending upon which league you join. you got to check this out, man. www.kofantasyboxing.com. Join it today. Again, www.kofantasyboxing.com. And tell them Billy C. sent you. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C., the only radio host man enough to take a punch from Mike Tyson. Wait a minute, man. Hold, hold, hold on there, Jeremy, man. Uh, I need you to take this one, all right? Wait, what? What? No way. I, I, I can't do this. Need I remind you I'm Billy C., damn it? Now put on that mustache and get in there. Hey, hey, look at me. I'm Billy C. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> the undisputed heavyweight champion of boxing talk radio. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. Test one, two. Test one, two. My fellow Americans, good evening. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C. It's great to be here discussing the sweet science with everybody. I love boxing. I love talking boxing. It's what I do. Um, Bill. Oh, uh, wait, what, Bill. What? Why are you interrupting yeah, um, me? What? Wrong, wrong. What's wrong, the problem? Billy what? C. I did not have. We're going to have to ask you. Wrong speech. What do you mean, wrong, Billy C? What's going on here? Fine, I'll go. I just wanted to. 
talk some boxing on TPS Radio. Doubt that. That's all I wanted to do. I don't need your damn show. I'll get my own talking wrestling with the other Billy C. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I've always been a Hulkamaniac anyway. <laughs> Podcasting live, brother. Welcome back to Talking Boxing with Billy C. On the mighty TPS Radio.net, brother. What you gonna do, brother? And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Box with Billy C. Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. I said channel. Glad you could join us. And uh, if you don't have the Fight Now uh, channel on your sports channel lineup, we got the wording for you to use now. Yeah, yeah, this is how you get it. Now, first of all, you call your local television provider, whether it's satellite dish or cable. And you tell them you want to add the Fight Now uh, channel to your sports channel lineup. Now, if it's available, they're just going to add it to your service, and you're going to be in luck. If it's not available through your carrier, what you want to do is you want to request them to add the channel to your sports channel lineup. They will put in a formal qu- request with the uh, the big suits from uh, from their uh, provider, and uh, you'll get it. So that's what you got to do. That's the actual wording. I heard it from the big cheese at Fight Now themselves, so uh, uh, that's what you got to do. So um, we're waiting uh, to hear from uh, Marty if he uh, remembers the, that he's got a call. I don't know, maybe uh, uh, maybe the, uh, uh, the the weather's bad over there in Colorado. I don't know, I don't know. But uh, uh, before he comes on, I'll talk about the uh, fights that took place last night. Broadway boxing right here on the Fight Now uh, television channel. Um, Yuri Foreman improved uh, to 30 wins and two losses uh, when he continued his comeback now uh, after uh, limping around the ring, losing his title. He fought in a six-round middleweight fight uh, as the uh, main event at the Roseland Ballroom in New York City um, on Fight Now, and it was on a bunch of other places too, but uh, Fight Now had it. Um, Yuri Foreman uh, fought a six-rounder against Gundrick King, who drops to 18 and 10. So it uh, wasn't uh, very much of a, a test for uh, Yuri Foreman, but nonetheless, he got the win. Uh, all three uh, judges uh, scored the fight in favor uh, of Yuri Foreman at 60 to 54. So uh, in case you're wondering about that. Um, we also uh, uh, had uh, in that uh, on that card Jojo Dan uh, in the junior middleweight uh, division he won a uh, unanimous decision over Damian Frias, who uh, wouldn't go away quietly, that's for sure. Uh, Frias drops to 19 wins, 7 losses, and a draw. Jojo, Jan, Jan, uh, Jojo Dan improves to 31 wins and 2 losses. His, uh, the way the judges saw it, 76-75, 78-73 twice. So one judge had it kind of close, and the other two, well, uh, they didn't. Um, the uh, other, they, they were billing these four uh, main fights. Uh, the, the the third of the four is uh, Louis Davalli, who's now being uh, trained by not, the famous Nacho Boinstein. Um, he uh, uh, took care of uh, Andre Wilson uh, by a uh, fifth round uh, stoppage. Uh, one minute and 32 seconds uh, was the official time in that one uh, in the uh, fifth round. Uh, a bo- several body shots in the third round uh, hurt uh, Wilson and uh, uh, Valley uh, finally finished him off. Uh, he uh, improves to uh, um, he improves to I don't have his record, so sorry they didn't uh, give it to me. Uh, but uh, I know I think he's only lost that one time. Uh, a female fighter who thinks she's all that she really does, and and I don't see anything special about uh, Heather Hardy except for one thing: she trains at uh, my man's gym, uh, Bruce Silverglade in in Brooklyn, Gleason's gym. Uh, but this is a girl that uh, fights and uh, uh, thinks she's already a champ. You know, there's nothing worse than young fighters who think who they are. You know, and she improved to 5-0. and oh. She's got this attitude like she's the best on the planet. And she her, her opponent was uh, is 0-5. You know, I, I mean, listen, no disrespect, but if you're going to fight and you fight, and and you win. It's it doesn't matter who who you're fighting or anything. I, I understand. It it's 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 a good victory whether the fighter has five wins or no wins. But you know what? 
you're fighting 0 and 5 fighters. You've never fought a fighter that has a winning record in her whole career, Heather Hardy. So, so why walk around like you think you're a champ, man? I, you know what? Be a little more humble than you are. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to give her any more time uh, because I can't stand it. Um, Gabriel Posario, he improved to 22 wins and a loss uh, when he uh, uh, took care of uh, Pavel Miranda who uh, was pretty tough uh, for Brasaro as well. But Miranda drops to 19 wins, 10 losses, and a draw. 78-74, 79-73, 80-72, all in favor of uh, the multi-punch output of uh, Gabriel Brasaro. Um, Brant Pee Wee Cruz, uh, he uh, uh, improved to uh, 3-0 and with uh, two knockouts uh, when he stopped uh, his opponent, uh, Antoine Knight, uh, in the uh, fourth round via a uh, TKO at two minutes, uh, I'm sorry, um, it, at two minutes uh, and 15 seconds of round three. It was uh, supposed to go to four rounds. It was scheduled for four, uh, but uh, he was st- he stopped him in round three. Uh, like I mentioned, Cruz is undefeated, 3-0 and with a couple of knockouts, and Knight loses for the third time. He's 2-3 and three with uh, one night knockout. Um, junior middleweight Patrick Day. Uh, won a uh, unanimous decision over Yusemani Abreu, uh, Abreu uh, who dropped to 3-7 and seven with a draw. 39-37 was the way all three judges saw this one uh, closer than uh, Patrick Day wanted. And uh, finally, uh, Dante Strayhorn made his pro debut, a good one. He improves to 1-0 and uh, over uh, Michael Carrara, who uh, was fighting for the second time in his career, who drops to 0-2. Uh, all three judges scored in favor of Dante, the future legend, Strayhorn. Uh, one judge had it uh, 40 to 36, while the other two saw it 39 to 37. Um, in uh, Australia, there were some fights yesterday uh, that I'll give you the results on. I, I love it when there's fights, uh, uh, you know, during the week and stuff. I, I think it's great, man. Um, you know, uh, this was uh, uh, broadcast on uh, national television in Australia. And Sam, Samuel Colombian improved to 21-6 and six with 10 knockouts uh, when he won a uh, uh, unanimous decision over uh, Letai Letai, uh, who drops uh, his first loss. He's 8-1 and one now with eight knockouts. Uh, it was a 12-round fight, uh, and uh, the WBF welterweight crown uh, was on the line. So congratulations to uh, um, Samuel Colombian. Now, I don't know which WBF it is. Uh, I didn't hear anything on the World Boxing Federation, so uh, this could very well be that uh, uh, other belt, but uh, I'm not going to say either way. <coughs> Excuse me. In the co-main event, Brett Elliott improved to nine wins, three losses, and three draws <clears throat> when he stopped Emmanuel uh, McAuliffe uh, in five rounds uh, to win a uh, state title. <coughs> Excuse me, in the super featherweight division, it was a scheduled eight round bout, and uh, Mia Khalif uh, drops to uh, two and ten with three draws. And a third fight that was televised, Ravon uh, Cesari improved to eleven and three with three knockouts when uh, he won a unanimous decision over Alex Atong uh, in an eight round matchup there in the welterweight division. Atong drops to eight wins, nineteen losses, and five draws. Um, Joel Diaz Jr. Now, Joel Diaz Jr. is an unlight, uh, I'm sorry, is a uh, undefeated light, uh, lightweight prospect. A lot of people love this kid. I, I've seen him fight live a few times. As a matter of fact, I, I called uh, the action for him uh, twice. And he, he shows me a lot of stuff. Now, he hasn't really fought uh, anybody of note yet. Um, and he fought a tough guy uh, last night uh, in Texas. Uh, he fought Victor Sanchez, uh, who uh, was supposed to go easy, but he didn't. Uh, and Joel Diaz improved to 12-0 and with 11 knockouts uh, when uh, uh, he stopped uh, Victor Sanchez uh, in, uh, in the fifth round. And um, Sanchez drops to four wins, six losses, and a draw with only one knockout. Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, he, uh, um, uh, San- uh, Joel Diaz is scheduled to fight next weekend. Uh, on the uh, card that we're doing uh, out of uh, uh, out of Ferdinanda Beach, which uh, is going to feature South Senecola. So uh, he goes five here, and uh, he's going to be uh, the co-main event uh, next weekend. So you'll be able to check him out. If you've never seen Joel Diaz fight, 
Uh, now's the time to check him out. Remember, he was in a really tough fight uh, against Guy Robb on Showtime, which kind of busted him onto the scene. Since then, he's been uh, fighting obscure uh, opposition, and sometimes you get to see him and sometimes you don't. Uh, he will be fighting a tough guy uh, next week uh, in uh, Fernandina Beach, so I, I strongly suggest that you uh, mark that one down. I'll give you some more information uh, on that in a little bit. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll give it to you right now uh, because uh, um, we uh, we got this. Uh, I have this information right in front of me now. First and foremost, uh, on Saturday, this Saturday, tune in to LDL TV uh, beginning at 7 p.m. when we uh, will be broadcasting live from the Miami Casino. Uh, a, a a pretty tough fight uh, in the main event will be a cruiserweight battle between uh, Isaiah Augustama against David McNeemer. Uh, that's the main uh, event in the cruiserweight division. Plus, there's a slew of uh, great undercard uh, fights to watch, so you could tune in. All the information about that is on ldltv.com, uh, so check that out. Now, with that out of the way, Sal Senecola is going to be breaking uh, a boxing record as well as uh, setting a, uh, a Guinness Book of World Record uh, on, uh, on, on Saturday, April 13th. Now, our very own... Henry Haskup, um, who's the not only a trivia question guru, but this guy uh, is a historian and, and a fact finder and all this stuff. I mean, very knowledgeable fellow. And um, he confirmed, and it's on the press release. If you check it out, you can read uh, the press release. We posted it up on BillyCBoxing.com. Um, Sal Senecola will indeed, uh, uh, according to Henry, um, will be uh, definitely breaking the record. Now, Henry was able to find several comebacks that ranged em- anywhere from 15 years to 22 years. Some weren't easily confirmed because there were multiple names of these people, um, but they ranged from 15 to 22 years. So even if they were all fine and true and everything else, the bottom line is no one has come back after 25 years uh, of uh, being absent from the ring. Sal will be setting a professional boxing record on April 13th, as well as um, being uh, etched in the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. So you can be part of this uh, by uh, coming to the fights uh, yourself. Uh, It's in Ferndonina Beach. Uh, It's going to be located at the... uh, uh, where is it at, at the park? Some, some at the park center in Ferndinand Beach. Um, here's the deal: they also announced yesterday that they're going to be holding an open workout on Sunday, this Sunday coming up at 5 p.m. Eastern time at the King and Prince Beach uh, and Golf Resort at uh, St. Simon's Island in Georgia. Um, tune into that. Check out uh, what you're going to see with Sal uh, Rocky Senecola. Uh, I got some updated photos of him last night. Uh, they were sent to me last night. I looked at him this morning. Uh, he looks in fantastic shape, man. You know, I, I mean, this guy uh, looks looks great. He's going to be taking on Nathan Petty, uh, the main event, Petty, uh, in the main event uh, on uh, April 13th. Uh, in addition to that, they named uh, some great uh, uh, other fights. Some co- so the co-feature is the one I just mentioned, Joel Diaz, uh, going up against Jose Hernandez, uh, who's a tough guy out of Georgia, 11-9. So it might be uh, Joel De- Diaz's uh, toughest test since Guy Robb. Uh, Chris Vendola is a heavyweight out of Jacksonville, Florida. He's scheduled to fight the once beaten Terry Cox. Um, a couple of uh, highly touted uh, uh, amateur prospects are making their pro debuts. In the featherweight division, Brandon Riles uh, out of Georgia will be making his pro debut. And in heavyweight, Jason King out of Fort Myers, Florida, uh, will be uh, taking on George Flores. Uh, in a four-round fight as well. So uh, a great card um, and uh, boxing history, April 13th. Uh, you could check it out for free if you're not going to be uh, ringside or, or in the venue by visiting uh, ldltv.com. Uh, and uh, also, don't forget, check out the uh, Open Workout, which uh, will be broadcast, and I'll be hosting the Open Workout as well as calling the action ringside. So you got a couple of things going on. You can watch us uh, on Saturday night. Uh, on LDL TV, I'll be calling the action. On Sunday, we'll be doing the uh, uh, we'll be doing this uh, open workout. During the week, we got some other stuff going on uh, that we will be uh, broadcasting. So you got to check out 
uh, the uh, social media and all of that for the updates and times and all that happy stuff. So your your best bet is to check out uh, uh, your best bet is to check out ldltv.com uh, for the information there. Now I want to get into that email uh, that Kieran sent. Uh, Marty's uh, lost his his shot here. Um, he says, uh, you know, I have to try and counter your argument about this generation of fans. He's referring to the current generation of fans. He says, I know we have disagreed uh, before about the fighting spirit of this generation of boxers, and I feel somewhat the same about the fans in one key way. Now, what he means is he, he and I had spoken about, um, you know, a lot of us older guys and, and even older than me, you know, feel you know, kind of collectively that um, the fighters of yesterday years displayed more heart, you know, uh, uh, maybe we're, and, and you know what, we're, we're not being fair because every generation thinks that the one before it is better. So, I mean, take it for what it's worth. You guys are going to think that same way too. But, um, and, and, you know, Kieran has made some great points to me. Uh, and I was saying about the fans yesterday, how they accept things and they shouldn't, and he says that I didn't like the idea you put forth that we, meaning his, your generation, the, the guys in your 20s right now, um, he says that we allowed these things to happen that we, my generation, would never have. He says that's a statement that doesn't make any sense to me, and here's why. He says older generations did allow this stuff to happen before we were even born. That's why we're here. It's here now. We accept it more readily, but that's because we're used to it because it's always been that way. How can we be used to it being that way if it wasn't that way before we became fans? We couldn't have. You know, that's a great point that Kieran makes. You know, um, it's like my generation, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over 50. And, and my generation, I, I was in a conversation the other day. This has nothing to do with boxing, but I was... Um, complaining that our generation my my generation is the reason that all these young kids and and you know parents and stuff are, are so quick to bring their kid to the doctor and say something's wrong johnny's is crazy he's out of control give him some kind of medication come on give him give him some kind of medication oh now he's a zombie now he's under control you know and when i was a kid that that didn't happen you know, uh, if if you were wild, well, you got punished a lot. You know, if you were having uh, a hard time in school, well, you had to study harder. You know, nowadays, everything's got a label. He's got attention deficit. He's got a behavior problem. He, he needs this medication. He needs that medication. Well, that's all from my own damn generation. We, you know, a lot of people my age were lazy when it came to raising their kids and, and parents and, you know, being parents and stuff like that. And the end result now, 20 years later, because, you know, we already raised our kids. I mean, my kids are in the mid-20s, you know. Um, so my kids are, are Curon's age. You know, so, I, I mean, it's our fault. And, and not that it's our fault, you know, people my age, that, that boxing is in the situation it is. But, you know, it goes beyond that. You know, how did these, um, uh, you know, sanctioning bodies infiltrate uh, boxing and, and become so diverse, you know, so, so, so divided? You know, how, who let that happen? Well, you know, older generations, not today's generation. Kieran's right. They didn't do it. <laughs> you know, uh, all the Floyd fans that I bash and, and stuff like that, it's not your fault that you like Floyd. That's what you've been used to, you know. I mean, you see him, you 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 equate him to to greatness, and and that's what you think, you know. And I, Kieran's right, you know. Now I'm not going to take, uh, you know, my generation uh, uh, who were, uh, you know, in our twenties, uh, uh, watching the Haglers and the Hearns and and uh, you know early Tysons and the Witherspoons and all those guys. Um, you know, I'm not going to say that boxing was great back then. You know, it was poor from the years before. Let me tell you something. I was shocked. i got to be honest. My, my man, Dave Ma Wilcox, all right, um, he used to be part of this show. And him and I, you know, we, we fooled around a lot. But we had a lot of serious conversations. And I was shocked one day. And I never told him this. So I don't even know if he listens to the show anymore. But um, he'll, he'll be surprised at this. But one day we were talking. And he was telling me how much he loved... Tim Witherspoon. 
Now, now I've since gotten to know Timmy Witherspoon very well. As a matter of fact, we we, we chat um, every so often on the phone and and through uh, social media. Plus, his son uh, Tim Jr. is is also pretty cool. Um, but but and by the way, Tim Witherspoon is going to be releasing a book, uh, which uh, he claims is going to be pretty interesting. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see about that. But I found it amazing that Dave Mo was looking at Tim Witherspoon as a great fighter, and and he was saying how much he enjoyed watching him, and t- you know he was so talented, he was this and he was that, and I never said anything to Dave. I never told him that I thought he was you know nuts or might might have been hitting a bottle or popping some pills or something. I just I wondered if it was me. I wondered if I, I had missed something, you know. And as I went back and 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 thought about Tim Witherspoon, and um, you know some of Dave's uh, you know accolades for him, I, I realized that I, all these years that I probably wasn't giving Timmy Witherspoon enough credit because I value what uh, Dave thought and and he was right. I mean, Tim Witherspoon did possess a lot of uh, uh, skills. He, he his problem was you know using them all at the same time and also being in shape and conditioning and attitude and all of that was his downfall. Um, but skill wise, he he was there. He 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 did have the skill. But it got me thinking when I read um, uh, this email because you know those fighters of of that era I I frowned upon. You know, I, when when Tim Witherspoon was was a champion, Greg Page, I remember saying, "Oh, this is when the dinosaurs roamed the heavyweight division. These big, slow, boring fighters." You know, and and I was referring to the Witherspoons and the Greg Pages. You know, those guys. You know, I, I mean, you know, they were just. It, it was a boring time, and then Mike Tyson hit the scene. It was like, oh, everything's great. Um, and you know, I, during that era, it was like. Um, you know, we would we came from a, a fantastic era in the si- '60s and '70s to the early '80s that were terrible. To Mike Tyson, which was basically a smokescreen. I'm not saying Mike Tyson was a smokescreen, but it, the the excitement that surrounded Mike Tyson was a smokescreen for the condition of boxing. And then you know we, we end up uh, at the end of the '80s into the '90s when it really was like, what the hell? Boxing sucks, man. You know, and, and uh, you know, in the early 2000s uh, and, until we started seeing this resurgence over the last six years or so. You know, so I agree with what Kieran is saying here. You know, um, you know, a kid, it, w- it was like uh, Brooklyn Mike and I doing the, the Talking New York Sports Show. A kid that's in his 20s right now, even 30, if he was a Yankee fan, if he was had the unfortunate uh, thing of being born into a Yankee fan family, uh, this kid at 30 years old never saw the Yankees have a crap season. He, he may be seeing it for the first time this year. Never saw the New York Yankees have a crap series uh, se- season in his whole life. You know, and, and you could say, you could argue a, a kid that's in his mid-20s has never gotten to see boxing when it was really good. And that's not their fault. That's not their fault. And and I agree with what Kieran is saying. And I never once meant it to come out like I was blaming them, although the wording I used might have come off like that. And, I, and, and that's not what I meant, because every single generation uh, thinks that uh, the one previous is, is better. And, and I've said this many times. If you would have asked me in 1985 or 1988 or 1987, you, know, you get the picture, in the 80s, if you would have asked me if I thought that I was witnessing what would be termed the last great era in boxing 25 years from now, you know, b- back then if you asked me. I would have laughed at you and went, huh, what? No, this is what boxing is. This is what it is. You know, and and I wasn't thinking that that fights like Hearns Hagler or, or Leonard uh, Hearns or, or Leonard Hagler or Roberto Duran and, and all the great fights that he had. You know, I wasn't thinking that. You know they were anything special. I just thought that they were the fights, man. They were—that's what you see when you went and saw a, a prize fight. You know, and, and now you fast forward it, and we realize what great fights they were, and there were so many of them. And and the question is—is is, do you get to say that twenty years from now, from the fights we're witnessing now, you you're going to say that about some of these big fights, these action-packed fights like Bam Bam Rios and Mike Alvarado? 
uh, like Timothy Bradley and Provognikov, like some of the many Pacquiao fights, especially they'll be talking about the Juan Manuel Marquez tr- uh, um, trilogy, I mean, uh, four-fight deal there. Um, but, uh, but again, you know, are you going to be, what are you going to be saying about Floyd? You're going to be able to say, oh, he was a great fighter. He had great defense. He could box. He could do this. He could do that. You know, assuming he retires undefeated, he was undefeated. He was great. He was great. He was great. But you're going to be hard pressed to to start talking about all these exciting fights because really there wasn't many. Um, but uh, but anyway, he also goes on to say, as a fan, because I couldn't afford cable or the internet until uh, I was a, at a later age. I came into the sport as a huge fan only ten years ago. I remember those early Billy C shows where all I heard was how the sport was the worst it had ever been. Uh, there were bodies, paper champs, and fights not happening. This is the world I entered without ever letting any of it happen. He's right. And and Curon was one of the earliest uh, listeners. I, I'll never forget the story uh, um, about uh, Curon and uh, um, just uh, battling some demons and stuff and uh, stumbled across our show as not even a a boxing fan, and, and he's become not only a, a, a great uh, diehard boxing fan now, but he's become a very important part of this show. He's helped us out immensely. I, I give him credit all the time. He's developed uh, many, many uh, uh, things for our show, uh, including banners and, and content and all kinds of stuff. He's never once uh, asked for anything in return. Uh, the guy has been uh, nothing but uh, top-notch. He's, he's clearly part of the Billy C. family. And as much as we tried to get him on all these years, I understand that he's just, uh, you know, just doesn't want. He doesn't want to be in the limelight. His, he's got an open ticket. Uh, I will uh, fill you in on a little secret. I wasn't going to do this, but uh, it's 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 basically, uh, uh, you know, an accolade for my man, Kieran. He uh, started a magazine for us uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and, and we just didn't have the time to do it. Um, and it's coming back, and and Curon, it's going to be his baby. He's going to be the editor. He's going to run it. It's going to be uh, uh, a uh, a boxing uh, magazine that's going to be out at least once a month. There may be other issues uh, more than once a month, but it will be uh, available to you online uh, on the uh, BillyCBoxing dot com uh, website. You'll be able to view it online or download it. So uh, uh, it's going to be available. It's going to be for free. And uh, that's the way we want it, man. Our own magazine, thanks to my man Curon, who comes up with some great emails, some great analogies uh, on uh, on things I say and sometimes stupid things I say. Hey, hold that thought because you know me. I like to say stupid things. I will uh, um, take a short break. When I come back, I got the last point of his email. Then we got some news. What happened with the former uh, Florida State Athletic Commissioner, Tom Malloy, he uh, also was a fighter. Um, what happened to him? Um, you know, everybody was wondering why the Florida State Athletic Commission kicked him to the curb. Well, he was in trouble uh, this past weekend, and uh, I'll tell you about that uh, in about two. Talk and Boxing with Billy C. now has official merchandise available on TalkinBoxing.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies and mugs, and yes, even undergarments. Talk and Boxing Apparel is the perfect gift for the boxing fan in your life. Log on to www.talkinboxing.com. That's T A L K I N B O X I N G.com. And place your order today. Join us here for two hours as Billy and the Gang do what they do best. Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got full of Rocky Marciano ass. Rocky Marciano was good. But compared to Joe Lewis, Rocky Marciano ain't. It's Joe Lewis's ass. <laughs> Joe Lewis was 75 years old when he fought. Huh? What? No We're way. supposed to be talking boxing. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. As Billy C. sits here in the multi million dollar Talking Boxing Studios, Sipping a fine wine before you're even out of bed. You should be thinking, damn, I wish I had a mustache like his. It's the Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Show. He's Billy C. And you're not. Sucks to be you. Now let's dig into our archives and hear a rare interview when Billy C. first became the champion of boxing talk radio. Uh, hello, Billy C. As the new champ, can we ask you a few questions? Why, certainly. 
Okay, your fans would like to know how you and your corner have successfully walloped the competition. We're not ordinary people. We're morons. Anything else? I'm a victim of circumstance. Did your success finally come when you made the show five days a week for two hours? What do you think? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Now, please tell the listeners what you've learned from making it this far. Certainly. If at least you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Great words of wisdom, Billy C. Keep up the great work as the undisputed people's champion with your show, Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Any last words to anyone who's listening? This is your fault, you bonehead. <laughs> yeah. And we're back. You're listening to the Talking Boxing with Billy C Show. You're watching us on the Fight Now television channel. And if you don't have Fight Now on your sports channel lineup, you need to call your local television provider and tell them that you want Fight Now right now. It's that simple, man. Pick up the phone and call. Now, we got some new information for you, too, on that. Uh, because uh, last week, or it might have been the week before, um, we had gotten uh, a bunch of emails and we, and we sent out some uh, uh, social media blasts ab- about, you know, taking the uh, steps to uh, uh, to qu- contact your local uh, television provider, whether it's satellite dish or cable, and tell them that you want to fight now channel eight to your sports channel lineup. Well, I got a bunch of responses um, thanks to you guys, the, the viewers and the listeners, that you did do that. Everybody wants to get uh, the show on on their television set and uh, uh, wants to be able to uh, you know DVR it and everything else. Plus. The Fight Now version of this show is, is you know, the best version of all because uh, it has some other video enhancements and stuff that the Internet version that you may be watching or the, uh, the uh, radio version that you may be listening to does not have. Um, and uh, what we found was that some of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, TV providers didn't know what the hell uh, you guys were talking about. So here's what you got to do. do. Do it for us. Do it for yourself. You call your local television provider. And you tell them that you want to add the Fight Now channel to your sports channel lineup. Now, if they already have it, which they may, they'll just add it to your, your sports package and you, you'll be set, man. If they don't have it and they say, well, we don't have the Fight Now channel, we don't, we don't know, I don't know what you're talking about, that's when you have to use this wording. You have to say, well, I want to put in a request for this channel. Can you enter a request for this channel? And then that gets entered into their... Uh, internal system uh, that uh, you know there are, are x amount of requests for the channel uh, being uh, being you know requested so that's what we need you to do all the information about uh, where to call because they have a like, nice little key uh, where you can call your own uh, provider and all that happy stuff can be found on fight now's website www.fightnow.com i got the last part of uh, kieran's email uh, making me feel bad uh, in a way, uh, but uh, he's right about uh, everything I said. If you missed it, go back and play it. He says, I feel it's important to say that I don't blame you older fans. Uh, far from it. All I'm saying uh, is we all have a, a part in it, uh, what happens in boxing. I just don't feel it's fair to label the new fans when they came into the sport already broken. Um, and I certainly didn't blame it on them. What My point yesterday was that the fans today accept some of the things like the fact that David Hay only fought six heavyweight fights, but Hey, he's, he's exciting. So he should get a fast track and they, you know, ignore the, the, the other heavyweight that, you know, is the blue collar heavyweight, the guy without the, the backing, the guy without the, the big mouth, the guy that nobody knows about who's fighting all the tough fights and the club shows making nothing, you know, he deserves a shot, you know, um, the Floyd Mayweather's, who, you know, make a whole career out of bragging how great they are and really, you know, don't seek out the best opposition. The B.J. Flores, who, who says he'll fight everybody and anybody and doesn't fight anybody anytime. So, um, you know, yeah, that's what I blame the young fan on. But like Kieran points out, um, it's not their fault. They don't know any better. That's all they've ever seen. He says uh, technology also has a huge impact on uh, this uh, f- on fandom, which he's referring to as uh, all the fans. He says, think about this. Older fans only knew the guys at work or friends and family 
to talk about boxing, perhaps letters and columns and magazines, so it would give the impression that everyone was uh, like-minded, but were they? Today, with the press of a button, all the Mayweather fans uh, can form a cult. The fans of Pacquiao, who don't even care about boxing, can join hands. Uh, We can see a robbery from another country and comment on a great fight at the same time. The negative of this is that we can be swept up in hype wallow in subgroups of fandom and read disinformation that skews our views on the sport. Sweet science is becoming a perfect example. It's still something we're all working out in our own ways. Uh, We're not the sole cause, neither are the older generations, but we should all be part of the cure. And and it's a great point. And and media, you know, it's it's funny about the media example that uh, Kieran puts here because, you know, at the touch of a button, at the click of a mouse, he's right. You know, we find fight results now. Uh, you know, as soon as the fight's over, you can you can get a, a tweet or, or a, a, you know, internet page uh, uh, has the results up. The, the writers already posted the stuff. And instantly, you know what's taken place. Considering 100 years ago, um, just for argument's sake, they would do a fight in, uh, in, in, in out west and... People wouldn't hear about Well, let's put an asterisk next to that. They would hear about the fight because there used to be a boxing beat writer for every single newspaper in the United States. That's how popular boxing was. But they wouldn't be able to see a fight for months later when it came in a movie theater or something like that. So um, clearly the media has improved. However, the negative is is that back when we had beat writers covering boxing every sing- for every single newspaper... You had guys that that became proficient in the sport of boxing. I'm not so sure we can say that about all the people that cover the sport today. We have a lot of writers that that get a uh, you know free uh, media pass to go cover a, a fight, and you read some of their stuff, and and it's just it's just not written by anyone who uh, uh, should be uh, termed a writer. You know, I mean, uh, uh, it's just uh, it, it's crazy stuff. So it, it's a it's a mixture of, uh, of thoughts and opinions and everything. And, and I tell you what, I agree with uh, Curon here. Uh, we all need to be part of the uh, correction, the fix. And, uh, you know, people like me got to stop pointing fingers. But uh, anyway, thanks for the email, uh, Curon. Um, Tom Malloy was uh, the Florida State Athletic Commissioner for uh, a while. He, he actually was let go uh, recently. And I wondered why, man. I, you know, I mean, I met this guy uh, a few times, and uh, he seemed uh, uh, he seemed like uh, he knew the sport. He was a former boxer. Uh, actually, uh, his uh, uh, his wife, um, who's uh, Elise uh, McLennan uh, Malloy, um, is uh, uh, also uh, still part of the uh, Florida uh, Athletic Commission. Um, she uh, um, she was. Um, um uh well here's the deal uh the bottom line um you know she's uh she's actually she was she's uh pretty young and uh she married tom malloy and uh tom malloy it says that she was born in 1986 so geez she's go you go tom tom uh tom is older than me but uh but i guess he didn't treat her too well because uh uh tom malloy was arrested uh, over the weekend for uh, beating up his wife, his beautiful wife, his beautiful young wife. What's wrong with you, Tom? Um, you know, and, um, you know, everybody who uh, uh, was following this story, what whatever happened with Tom Malloy, rumor was uh, spreading around that he was going to be uh, working with Don King, uh, but uh, that never materialized. Uh, um, well, you know, uh, he was arrested uh, last weekend in uh, Leon County in Florida, and uh, it was uh, officially uh, released that uh, he was uh, domestic violence, a battery uh, charge uh, for beating up his wife. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, people are saying, you see, the Florida State Athletic Commission knew what was going on. They accused him of uh, uh, not uh, coming up with records, uh, that he had 51 shows uh, um, in the calendar year and had no records for any of them, uh, you know, only except for one. Um, so far this year, they have six or five or six shows scheduled, so uh, a big uh, drop-off. But Tom Malloy arrested for beating up his beautiful young wife. Jesus, Tom. You know, but uh, anyway, um, I hate when uh, when that happens, you know, when, when guys beat up beautiful young women. 
You know, throw them my way. If you're ready to smack them or something, throw them my way. I'll, you know, I'll let you hit me, all right? And then I'll hit you back, you know, but uh, anyway. Um, they uh, added a couple of uh, fights to the uh, to the uh, fight, the, the card that's going to be taking place in June, um, between uh, which is actually a, a fight that uh, I forgot about, to be honest with you, not for any other reason other than it just slipped my mind. Uh, Josito Lopez. Uh, going up against uh, Marcos Medania is the main event, which I remember when the fight was announced, I, I thought it was kind of silly of Josito Lopez to fight Medania um, because, uh, you know, I, I thought, that, and it's at the, in the welterweight division, and I thought that Josito Lopez should have went back down to junior welterweight. I mean, uh, uh, this was a guy that, uh, uh, you know, junior welterweight, he actually had moved up. Uh, to fight in the junior welterweight division. Then he fought in the junior welterweight division. Then he moved up to fight uh, in the welterweight division and beat um, or Victor Ortiz uh, for that huge upset. Then he moved up again and fought uh, um, uh, Solo Alvarez uh, at junior middleweight. So, uh, you know, I would have expected to see him go back down to, to at least the weight class that, um, you know, he was more comfortable in junior junior uh, welterweight. Instead, he, he just went down to welterweight, and he's taking on Marcus Medania. Um, Medania seemed to have lost uh, some of his pop uh, moving up from uh, junior welterweight to welterweight. Uh, Josito Lopez is perfect for Medania. Uh, Medania is perfect for Josito Lopez. Talk about a candidate for fight of the year. This could very well pick up where uh, uh, Alvarado Rios 2 left off. So uh, we'll wait and see on that one. But... They added a couple of a uh, couple of decent fighters. How about uh, Alfredo Angulo and a Sir Landy Lara uh, are going to be uh, getting it on, as Mills Lane would say, uh, in the uh, junior middleweight division. And then uh, super middleweight fighter Seiko Bika, who's got more lives than a than a, a, a whole collection of cats um, combined uh, against uh, Marco Antonio Paraben. Um, they uh, round out the triple header that they're going to broadcast live on. You guessed it, Showtime. Um, Lara is 17 wins and a loss with a couple of draws. Uh, he is uh, going to be uh, taking on uh, um, Alfredo Angulo, who's been seen uh, ringside for a lot of fights. Uh, uh, looks like a troubled guy. Uh, in his last fight, he, I, I thought that uh, he lost, to tell you the truth. He uh, uh, got uh, battered uh, around pretty much in that fight. Uh, it was hurt and everything else. Uh, came out w with a with a squeaky clean uh, win, uh, and I say squeaky clean, meaning he squeaked out the win. I don't know how clean it was, uh, but uh, but the bottom line is that uh, uh, you know he hasn't looked as as overwhelming as he used to. But I tell you what, he does look like. Uh, people have said he looks like a caveman and stuff with his new uh, long hair and his beard. How about Jim Morrison? If you've ever if you're as old as me and you know who Jim Morrison is uh, or was from uh, the Doors, the group The Doors, um, go go punch up uh, what Jim Morrison looked like, and uh, and I don't mean his early uh, hairless, uh, you know, faceless hair uh, days uh, or hairless face days, uh, but more towards the end of his life when he was a drunken uh, <laughs> drug addict. You know, punch up punch up Jim Morrison as a drunken drug addict, and you will see. Uh, a spitting image of Alfredo Angulo. Uh, but uh, Angulo can fight a little better than Jim Morrison used to. Um, Lara and, and uh, Angulo ought to be uh, a decent fight. It's definitely a contrasting styles. We'll look forward to that. As far as Seiko Bika and uh, Perriman, Perriman uh, is a guy that uh, is up and coming. Um, and, uh, you know, he's undefeated, 20-0 and 0 with 13 knockouts. Seiko Bika... You never know what you're going to get with him, except uh, a f that you you know most likely will be getting a uh, a, a fight that uh, he's going to try hard on anyway, you know. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. The main event, like I said, is uh, Josito Lopez uh, going up against uh, uh, Marcos Medina, which uh, uh, is a uh, that, that that's a decent fight. That's a decent fight. I, I can't wait for it. It sounds like it's going to be a, a fight of the year candidate. Um, some some stuff that uh, is going on. They announced uh, on May 25th in Lunat Park. I was just talking about Omar Navarez yesterday. He's uh, currently the uh, super flyweight world champion. 38 wins, one loss, two draws. His only loss at the hands of Nonito Donaire when he moved up two weight classes to fight him. Uh, he's going to be making the seventh defense of his world title when he takes on Daniel Rojas. 
uh, May 25th uh, in Argentina at Luna Park. So uh, we'll be looking forward to uh, that one on May 25th. Um, I wanted to uh, mention uh, uh, something about uh, the WBC. Now, the WBC, I'm going to read you um, a, uh, a statement, basically, from the WBC. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going up against the AIBA, uh, which is really um, is, is the International Boxing Association, or more commonly known as the World Series of Boxing, um, even though they're defined, uh, their their letters are A I B A. The A used to stand for Amateur International Boxing Organization, but they don't call themselves amateur anymore. Even though, if you, if you recall, this is the organization that formed, and they're able to uh, have fighters join. It's like a team oriented thing where you have uh, fighters, uh, you know, clubs uh, from, from different uh, locations, different countries, and they fight other clubs, and um, they're considered amateur, and they get paid, and they do not lose their amateur status, and they do not lose the Olympic opportunities and all of that. Uh, it busted onto the scene a few years ago. Uh, it's been doing very well, and the biggest uh, opponent for this is the WBC and Jose Suleiman? You know how I feel about him. He's the uh, model for the original troll doll. I mean, uh, let's be real. He put on a Don King hair uh, wig and uh, was orange. And uh, they took a picture of him and they said, "Oh my God, this is the troll doll!" Bam! And they invented it. Um, he has been strongly opposed of it. Why? Well, the reason why is because he's threatened by them. But listen to how he puts this. Um, he says uh, uh, that they object, and this is Jose Suleiman, says that we object to the steps taken by the Amateur International Boxing Association uh, to organize professional boxing tournaments under the name WSB, which is the World Series of Boxing. He says, according to the AIBA WSB, only boxers registered in their tournament will be eligible to compete at Olympic Games to the exclusion of any boxers affiliated with any other organization. All boxers worldwide eligible under current Olympic game requirements, regardless of their country, origin, or the organization in which they are affiliated, should have the same opportunity to compete at the Olympic Games. The WBC says the AIBA WSB's actions clearly constitute an, an attempt uh, to establish a monopoly and restraint of trade. Um, first of all, uh, let me just comment on this. First of all, they're not saying that other fighters can't. The AIBA is not saying that other fighters can't uh, compete in the Olympics. They're saying that if you're part of their group, the WSB, that you will be still able to, to uh, participate. And you can't just come in and compete with their tournaments uh, without being part of the WSB. Okay? That's what they're saying. They're not saying that they're excluded from the Olympics. They're not saying that. That's Jose Suleiman trying to twist the words around. But but let me ask you this. Isn't the, it the same thing as what the WBC does? Like, in other words, if you're not ranked in their rankings, you're not going to fight for one of their belts, right? If you're not a WBC champion, you're not being regarded as a champion to in their minds. They even, if one of their fighters fights another f champion from another sanctioning body, what do they do? They strip them of their title and they so-called elevate them to super champion or, in their case, diamond champion status and then make them wait in line to fight for the title that they stripped them of. All you got to do is follow the bouncing title with Sergio Martinez to see that path. So, uh, you know, here's a case where Jose Suleiman is throwing stones even though he lives in uh, a glass house. He goes on to say, um, the AIBA, and this is according to Jose Suleiman, the WBC's uh, elitist, atti uh, elitist attitude in, is in disregard of the rights of world boxers, further confirmed by the exclusion of third world countries among their proposed tournament sites. In furtherance of its uh, nefarious intentions, the AIBA withdrew the letter A, which denoted amateur, from its acronym. By doing so, the new AIBA now has become part of a group of about 10 professional boxing organizations, all which should have the same rights. Um, 
No, because they still are considered amateur status. Now, whether you want to agree with the way that that is defined or not, that's a whole nother story. But, you know, he's throwing in this third world thing. Um, he, they're not excluding anybody from trying to put a team into the WSB. You've got to follow the protocol to, to set up a team just like anybody else. They don't care where it is. They want more, more teams, as, as many as they can get. So this is wrong. By him throwing in something like a third world country, let me ask you this. What promoter would take a WBC fight and put it in a place that they don't have any of their fighters reside or there's no way to sell tickets or anything like that? And, and just because it's a WBC title, they're going to go stick it in, in, a, in a country someplace where they don't even have boxing, they don't have any fans, they don't have any knowledge, they don't have television, they don't have any heat or air conditioning, whatever. You know, uh, you're going to blame a promoter. I don't see the WBC forcing any promoters to put on WBC-sanctioned fights in places where the promoter's not going to make money. Again, it makes no sense. It's just, it's just Jose Suleiman trying to discredit another organization for benefits of, for himself. He goes on to say, um, it sent three inquiries about the uh, AIBA slash WSBS discriminatory t actions towards the intellect uh, and uh, discriminatory actions to the International Olympic Committee. They're saying that they sent these uh, requests to the uh, IOC, the International Olympic Committee, and uh, its president, uh, Jacques uh, uh, Rogi. Uh, and uh, in all the inquiries, the WBC has asked uh, Mr. Rogi to endorse or disapprove uh, the actions by the WSB, which they feel, the WBC, is illegal and in violation of the rights of citizens of every nation and their legal boxing institutions. Uh, however, uh, Rogi and the IOC have not given the WBC even a courtesy of a response. They go on to say it will remain vigilant and will continue to monitor the WSB's abuses of power and attempts to demand the sovereign nations change their laws to accommodate the WSB's restrictive purposes. The uh, WBC is committed to continue advising the boxing world and the world leaders of the sport about the danger of the sport of boxing that the WSB represents. Um, you know, this is, this, is, this is a guy clearly acting on fear. Uh, what he doesn't want is a league to be formed in boxing because that, you know, takes some strength away from Don Jose Suleiman. Okay? When we all agree that a league could be great for the sport of boxing, the reason why we don't s set up a league right now is because we have these suckers, you know, these blood suckers that we call sanctioning bodies like the WBC. Let me ask you this. Who has put the WBC in charge of overseeing that boxing is done uh, correctly? Who, who, who's done this? Uh, was, was, there, uh, was there something I missed? Did the WBC become appointed as, as you know, the, the, good, the good of boxing uh, sanctioning body? I, I mean, wh when did this happen? This was them separating themselves from the rest of the uh, boxing world. Now, now you know, we can't, I, I criticize them for doing that. But I, I understand why. They're, they're trying to create more value in the WBC brand. I get it, man. You know, nobody has to explain it to me. Stop writing the email now. I, I know. I know. But what they're complaining about is exactly what they do. And, and the thing that bothers me the most is why should anybody respond to ridiculous allegations that, that the WBC is making? You know, this, this uh, uh, WSB is not, uh, you know, eliminating or, or not allowing, disapproving, whatever wording that the WBC uses. They're not disapproving other people from joining their reindeer games. They're, they're promoting it. They're opening the doors. You know, you need a certain criteria. You know, you want to form a, a, an organization? Fine. You know, you want to fight as an amateur? You got to join USA Boxing here in the United States. You know, I mean, that's a, that's a prereq. You've you got to be part of it, you know. Uh, this is just an organization that is taking amateur boxing to another level. They're, they're trying to entice uh, boxing. Um, in, uh, they're trying to entice young athletes to choose boxing and giving them a reason to. You know, we always talk about the pool of boxers. 
And we're always saying, well, you know, unfortunately the great heavyweights are playing football or basketball right now or, or, or you know, swinging a bat or pitching a baseball. You know, uh, they're choosing other sports. They're not choosing boxing. Well, something like the WSB, in my opinion, gives a young athlete um, another opportunity. You know, and, and, and let's say that, um, you know, let's say a, a kid, uh, you know, has the opportunity to play um, football. Um, or or play baseball, uh, but but maybe not as a starter, or 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 maybe not uh, you know in the NFL, may, maybe in the arena league or or you know the indoor leagues or or you know the NFL Europe if they still have that or whatever, or in baseball maybe not uh, on on the major league level, maybe in AAA, you know maybe they get to play that one notch below major, or, or maybe they play pro in in independent league and and they make some money, they make money at it. But they don't make uh, a lot of money, and um, maybe maybe that that young athlete who who boxes too may see an advantage of of getting involved with something like the World Series of Boxing because uh, you know they could make a few dollars because they 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 actually can make um, um, I believe that the the salary uh, for these uh, U, U, uh, uh, World Series of Boxing um, starts off at twenty five thousand a year and maxes out at, at three hundred thousand. If you if you join and you become uh, part of uh, part of a team that that you know gets on this uh, uh, travel circuit, um, that's a lot of money. You know, even twenty five grand is more than uh, you know a lot of these uh, young boxers make a, as a full time pro. And and the advantage that that you, you see here, and and the reason why, you know, at first I got to admit I was like, well, wait a minute, if they're paying them, they're pros, right? They're making more money. You make three hundred thousand dollars a year as an amateur. You're making probably two hundred and fifty that excuse me two hundred fifty thousand more than a lot of boxers make in a year you know before they make it to the big time you know and at first i, I got to admit i was a little hesitant to be supportive of that but the more i thought of it you know i mean basically what you're doing is you know how we're always saying well you know these fighters don't have the money to pay for the head scans when i you know recommend that all fighters before they turn pro get head scans blah 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 they don't have the money to do this. They don't have the money to get the right management, the right team, the right this. Well, isn't this like kind of, you know, look upon it as college for, for a fighter? I mean, couldn't, couldn't we take a fighter that doesn't have the resources to go to college and he's athletically inclined uh, to, to play sports, but he doesn't win a scholarship and now he gets to choose this, but at the same time, maybe he can make a few dollars. Maybe he can create some value in himself, still maintain amateur status so he could compete in the olympics if he chose to um you know and and lay the foundation for a boxing career a true boxing career a a, a boxing professional who has a, the minor league and 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 the experience that we want in our fighters you know we criticize um we criticize uh uh fighters that that don't get the opportunity uh to have an amateur career we criticize that southern circuit you know, a, a, a lot of fighters, uh, hey, I want to be a boxer, Poof, you're pro, you know, your first pro fight and, and you never fought in a ring before. You know, uh, the, the bigger uh, commissions don't allow that, but some smaller commissions do. You know, isn't the World Series of Boxing a, 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 a minor league for pros? Uh, you know, if they're going to make some money, fine. You know, if they want to keep their uh, amateur status and it's only for the for the Olympics, it's not, they're already in a, in an amateur group that's uh, above and beyond what you're going to see at a Golden Glove novice tournament, you know, so I think it's a good idea. And I think that the, the WBC and Jose Suleiman, they're just afraid that they're pulling fighters from their grips, from the WBC's grips. And what protection do you have for the WBC? You have nothing, no protection. Hold that thought. Talking boxing with Billy C. Every week, two hours of the best boxing talk on the radio. I have a bunch of questions, Donnell, right? If you feel like you want to, you can answer for J.D. first. Why will you win? J.D. Chapman, why will you win? Baby Holmes will get sick and get hit by a train that day on the way to the title. He might have diarrhea. He might have the flu. He might throw up. One of his eyeballs might fall out that day, and I might get lucky. Talking boxing with Billy C. In the real world, life has its shares of trials and tribulations, but you don't have to face them alone. 
This is Patricia Campanero of Campanero and Tomkovich. If you are facing emotionally difficult family legal issues from divorce to child custody, reach out to the team that will dedicate themselves to fighting for you, the team of Campanero and Tomkovich. With almost 30 years of experience handling divorce, child custody, legal guardianship, visitation, and other legal issues dealing with family concerns, we can help you resolve the problems you are facing with professionalism and care. Our supportive staff is always ready to assist you with any questions or concerns you may have. To find out more about Campanero and Tomkovich, visit us at duchessnylaw.com or call us and speak to a member of our attentive staff at 845-221-4099. That's 845-221-4099. Don't be surprised at court with inexperienced representation. At Campanero and Tomkovich, we have been helping our clients get the justice they deserve for almost 30 years, and we could do the same for you. Now back to Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. He may not have an excellence in broadcasting. Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. now has official merchandise available on TalkinBoxing.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies and mugs, and yes, even undergarments. Talkin' Boxing apparel is the perfect gift for the boxing fan in your life. Log on to www.TalkinBoxing.com. That's T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G.com. And place your order today. Join us here for two hours as Billy and the gang do what they do best. Every time I start talking about boxing, a white man got to pull a rock and my piano out there. Rock and my piano is good. Fuck a bad Joe Lewis. Rock and my piano is good. It's Joe Lewis's ass. Joe Lewis was 75 years old when he fought. Huh? What? We're Boy. supposed to be talking boxing. It's Talking Boxing with Billy C. As Billy C. sits here in the multi million dollar Talking Boxing Studios, Sipping a fine wine before you're even out of bed. You should be thinking, damn, I wish I had a mustache like his. It's the Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Show. He's Billy C. And you're not. Sucks to be you. Now let's dig into our archives and hear a rare interview when Billy C. first became the champion of boxing talk radio. Uh, hello, Billy C. As the new champ, can we ask you a few questions? Why, certainly. <laughs> okay, your fans would like to know how you and your corner have successfully walloped the competition. We're not ordinary people. We're morons. Anything else? I'm a victim of circumstance. Did your success finally come when you made the show five days a week for two hours? What do you think? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Now, please tell the listeners what you've learned from making it this far. Certainly. If a place you don't succeed, keep on sucking till you do succeed. Great words of wisdom, Billy C. Keep up the great work as the undisputed people's champion with your show, Talkin' Boxing with Billy C. Any last words to anyone who's listening? This is your fault, you bonehead. <laughs> yeah. And we're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had uh, an extended uh, break. That's what drinking all this water does, man. Jeez, I couldn't. Uh... Anyway, you're watching us on the Fight Now television channel, and uh, I've been telling you guys the secret. Yeah, you, you've been wondering how you get it, and this is good. Alex is in the chat room. He needs to know this, too. Uh, we found out the, uh, the specific uh, uh, terminology you got to use. Now, when you call your local television provider, and you're going to go through two steps. You're going to say, you want to add Fight Now to your sports channel lineup. Now, they're going to say one of two things. They're either going to say, okay, okay, you, it'll, you, you got it now. Piff, flip the magic switch, and you'll have it. Or they're going to say, Fight Now, we don't have it. And that's when you got to say, well, I want you to put in a request for the Fight Now channel to be added to your sports channel lineup. That's the verbiage you need. Okay, Alex is one of the people that uh, were asking for the verbiage the other day, and I just gave it to him. He's in the chat room. So that's what you want to do. You want to ask your television provider to have Fight Now. Uh, you want to put in a request to have the Fight Now channel added to the sports channel lineup. So uh, we're getting uh, exact words for you. So uh, anyway, he's also giving me a heads up on uh, uh, a, a college uh, championship uh, which uh, we're going to be posting uh, a little bit later. 
uh, up on the website. And, and, you know, it's funny because we've been just now I've been talking about this whole WBC uh, issue with the World Series of Boxing and, uh, um, you know, about how important it is for the amateurs and and for us to get a a good uh, pool of, of young fighters. And the WBC seems to be hindering that. They don't want that. They want these guys to be under their uh, guide, so to speak, uh, which is wrong. I, you know, I, I, I don't like that. I like the World Series of Boxing, and I love these college championships, which I'm shocked when uh, Alex uh, uh, was telling me he was covering these fights. I, you know, I, I, for some reason, I thought that, you know, ever since Mike Lee uh, started doing Subway commercials, I thought that uh, the college boxing uh, uh, scene uh, became popular. But actually, 39 years, I believe, I believe if I remember correctly, when I was uh, uh, doing the research on some stuff that Alex sent to me, this is the 39th year of college boxing championships. So uh, it's been around. It's alive as well. I, I love it. I think we need as many amateurs uh, level fighters as we can get. I think the more extensive amateur careers they have, the better they will be, uh, the better boxing will be. Uh, you know, I, listen, I, I want to say this. You know, the WBC, uh, you know, I, I gave them credit. Uh, they're going to be bringing instant replay to the, to the ring. I, you know, I, I, I like that. I like the fact that that they want to use computerized scoring system and all of that. What I don't like is that they separate themselves from the from boxing. I mean, they look at themselves as boxing. The WBC thinks that they are boxing, that you have professional boxing and it's the WBC. They don't recognize any other sanctioning body or their fighters, and now they don't want to recognize um, any type of uh, of amateur league because it may be taken pool uh, might be taking fighters from the pool that they want to choose fighters from. So I don't like it. Although they do have some good ideas, I think if the WBC tried to organize the other sanctioning bodies, which wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, I mean, listen, you know, back in uh, the Al Capone days, uh, rather than fight each other, those uh, organizations uh, all uh, unified and became a, a pretty unstoppable force. So. I mean, uh, you can do those types of things uh, uh, today uh, legally in, in business, and, and maybe uh, the WBC should be focusing uh, on uh, unity, unifying boxing instead of dividing it. And uh, they're finding uh, another way to, uh, uh, to add division uh, in it by uh, bashing uh, the WSB, the World Series of Boxing, which is really just doing kind of the same things that WBC does. I think the more pool... The bigger pool of uh, fighters we get to choose from, the more experience that these fighters get uh, before they become actually professionals is better for the sport long term. Uh, we all think here in this country, in the United States, that our amateur program needs some revamping. Uh, I've been very critical of Teddy Atlas uh, uh, at, at times. I agree with uh, a lot of his stuff. I disagree with a lot of it, too. But the one thing I'm 100% I, I, I'm 100 serious about two things with Teddy Atlas. Number one, he doesn't know how to score a fight, and they should not give him a scorecard and a pencil. They should give him a coloring book and a crayon. And number two, I believe that Teddy Atlas should be a guy that runs the United States amateur boxing program. Uh, I think that he would be perfect for that. Uh, the history part, uh, his training methods, uh, his strength in terms of uh, notoriety, um, all of that would be very, very good for our USA Boxing program. And uh, I, I really think that the powers that be should look into uh, to Teddy Atlas. If, if anybody out there is listening, that you're into amateurs and you want to uh, send the request, you just tell them that I'll be the first to endorse Teddy Atlas. Uh, Billy C. Uh, will uh, endorse Teddy Atlas, and uh, I'll help Teddy in any way I can to get him to be uh, running our amateur program and just to please, Teddy, put down that pencil, put down that scorecard, back away from the scorecard, Teddy. Get away. You, you, it's, it's just please, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Um, the Billy C. Challenge, man. We, uh, we're going uh, hot and heavy, and uh, we're uh, pretty strong on it. I will try to get the uh, uh, current uh, updates, but I will give you this. Um, first and foremost, uh, we did uh, uh, have to kick to the curb uh, uh, several uh, uh, 
uh, of the players uh, because uh, of their basically lack of commitment. I, we're, we're really only looking for serious players. So if you want to play and uh, you can uh, you know be involved uh, uh, with the picks on a weekly basis, um, then uh, please drop me an email, Billy at Talking Boxing, T A L K I N B O X I N G dot com. Uh, but these guys work real hard at, at their picks, and and uh, they're very serious about uh, winning, and and so am I, and uh, that's the way it is. With that said, um, we have uh, I'll give you my year to date leaders uh, as of uh, uh, April third. Uh, John McNair is uh, in first place uh, for uh, the year end prize at eighty two percent winning percentage. He's got 45 of 55 uh, so far for the year. Uh, where do I sit? Well, uh, actually, I'm uh, in charge. I'm in front of everybody for the year end. Uh, I'm at uh, 83%, and uh, I uh, have 86 out of 104 uh, on uh, on those. The next uh, closest one uh, after Jerry Murray is, I mean, uh, after John McNair is Jerry Murray. He's in second place with 79% winning percentage. And then uh, tied for third place, we have Martin, uh, Marty Mul- Mulcahy, Ryan Kinsett, and my man Dave Murphy, uh, all at 78%. So that's our year end. But I know what you want to hear. Who won for uh, the month of March? Well, congratulations goes to Ryan Kinsett. Ryan Kinsett won uh, uh, March. He was 32 of 41. That's the same uh, numbers I had for the month of March. Uh, that's a 78% winning percentage. So congratulations to Ryan. Ryan, if you're listening, you got to send me your uh, mailing address. I'll send you your prize. Um, now, there was uh, another guy that was tied at 78%, and that's Marty Mulcahy. But the first tiebreaker is the total number of, ga- of uh, fights you picked. And Ryan picked 41 for the month of March, and Marty Mulcahy only picked 27. Therefore, the tiebreaker goes to Ryan. So congratulations to Ryan uh, for uh, winning uh, the month of uh, March. So uh, we've got a long way to go. Uh, we got April's uh, uh, fights starting this week. And I also added to all the challengers, uh, you got this week's and next week's because uh, I will be uh, uh, on the road. And I didn't want uh, to miss a week. So we got uh, two weeks worth of picks uh, to do uh, now. And uh, you need to get them in. As far as the fights I'm going to pick, uh, of the, uh, we, we actually have fights for Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday for this week, and then Friday and Saturday uh, of uh, next week. I'm going to pick the four fights for Friday and Saturday right now and uh, give you who I like and, uh, and, and why. These are all uh, televised uh, fights. The first one I'm going to pick is the one I'm going to be calling ringside, uh, Isaiah Augustama going up against David McNemer. Uh, you'll be able to uh, watch this fight live on LDL TV beginning, I believe, at around 7 uh, PM Eastern time. Uh, I think you'll start to get the preliminary stuff. Uh, I believe the uh, first fight uh, starts at eight, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I would check in at LDLTV.com tonight uh, to, I mean, uh, Saturday night to check that one out. I'm sorry, it's not tonight. It's Saturday night uh, on uh, on this one. So LDLTV.com Saturday night. Uh, it'll uh, be perfect because uh, during the day you're going to get to see HBO's. Uh, uh, broadcast of the fights from China, and then after that, you're still going to be jacked up for fights, so you'll be able to tune in to LDL TV and uh, check out uh, me calling the action for this fight that I'm going to pick. Um, right now, David uh, McNamer uh, going up against uh, Azia Augustama in the cruiserweight division. McNamer is uh, ranked number 246 in the cruiserweight division. Uh, he's got a record of uh, 13 wins, 10 coming by knockout. And uh, he's got two losses where he was only stopped one time. Now, uh, he's 40 years old, which is uh, kind of old, you know, for a fighter. Um, he did uh, start boxing in 1996. He fought 96, 97, 98, 99. Uh, then uh, did not fight until 2002. Then took a five-year layoff. Fought from 2002 to 2007. Then, and then didn't fight again until 2011. So uh, he's been on and on, on again, off again. At 40 years old, he's got 72 rounds as a pro with a 67% knockout ratio. His last two fights were his only losses. His only stoppage loss was against B.J. Flores, the fraud himself, which took place uh, October of last year. B. 
BJ took care of him in two rounds. The fight before that, he fought in June of 2011 against Ryan Coyne and went 12 rounds with the tough Ryan Coyne, who was undefeated at the time. Those are his last two fights. Now, the rest of his fights, the other 13 of his professional fights, all wins. Um, 13 wins, 10 coming by knockout. Uh, basically, uh, listen, if you combine the record of all the opponents for those 13 fights, they had 57 wins, 118 losses, and five draws. I think that tells you where uh, uh, this kid is uh, right now, and I call him a kid even though he's 40 years old. He steps in with a, a, a promising uh, a young fighter who's 29 years old, Azia Agustama, um, generally fights in the uh, light heavyweight division. Uh, he has uh, fought before in the cruiserweight division, and he's fighting again. He wants a campaign now full-time as a cruiserweight. He's ranked number 137 in the light heavyweight division, so he'll be making this move uh, to cruiserweight. He's got a record of 13 wins, one loss, eight of his wins coming by knockout. Uh, in his loss, uh, he was never stopped, but look who he lost to, a close majority eight-round decision of Dennis Grachov, who uh, we all know what's uh, taken place with him since then. Uh, so, uh, you know, this kid can fight. They call him uh, the Haitian uh, night. Uh, what do they call him? The Haitian uh, nightmare or, or something like that. Um, Hollywood. Uh, Hollywood Haitian, I think, or something along those lines. Um, he's uh, got some decent wins against some experienced fighters. Um, you know, he's got 47 uh, rounds as a pro with a 57% knockout ratio. He's only 29 years old, so he's 11 years younger uh, than his opponent. Uh, he's five foot eleven. Uh, I'm picking Agustama. I- I'm going to be calling this fight, and I'm picking Agustama uh, in uh, what I think is going to be uh, uh, an entertaining fight. I, I don't think it's going to be a walkover because uh, uh, Niemer McNeemer uh, comes to fight, but uh, I-, I am picking uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, favorite in this one, Agustama. The next fight, excuse me, the next fight I'm going to pick is on uh, Friday Night Fights. Jonathan uh, Masiello. Uh, is taking on uh, Rustam Nukayev. And Nukayev is uh, uh, a fighter that's got 22 wins, 12 coming by knockout. Uh, he's got uh, six losses, never been stopped. Uh, he's from Russia. He's five foot ten. Uh, he's ranked. Uh, uh, he's not ranked uh, in the lightweight division in, in which he's fighting because he hasn't fought in over a year and a half. He's five foot ten. He's got under 200 rounds as a pro, 186 with a 41 percent knockout ratio. He's never fought outside of Russia. His whole career he's fought in Russia, except for one time he fought in Duluth, Minnesota, and uh, that was uh, uh, his only time uh, in the... Actually, I'm wrong. He fought twice in the United States. He also fought uh, in uh, Reno, uh, and both of those uh, uh, fights were uh, uh, wins. So uh, um, we will uh, uh, see uh, how he fights. I think this fight is uh, not in Russia. I know it's not in Russia either, so he'll be uh, traveling out. Uh, of his uh, home area. Now, Jonathan uh, Masiello, uh, he's uh, from uh, uh, Peru. Uh, he now uh, lives in Joyce. That's a long drive. Uh, he's ranked number 25 in the lightweight division. He's undefeated 19-0 and with uh, 11 knockouts. He's 29 years old. Uh, now, uh, I will say this, that, uh, uh, you know, he's got uh, a height disadvantage. Uh, uh, Rustem uh, Nugagev, uh, uh, has a, a substantial uh, height uh, and reach advantage over uh, Masiello. Masiello has uh, got 102 rounds as a pro with a 58% knockout ratio. Um, out of all his fights that he's fought, when you look at his resume, he's fought the, the, the typical let's build up uh, our kids record. But there's two names on it that stick out to me um, that uh, I thought were notable wins. And uh, both of those fights took place last year in 2012. He's already fought once this year. He fought in January. Uh, but uh, he fought Fernando Angulo uh, in May of 2012 and won a, uh, a nine-round uh, unanimous decision. Now, that was uh, a WBA. You know how they, they're experimenting with uh, some of those to try to not to get draws. Uh, and uh, uh, Angulo had a record of 24 wins and eight losses. Uh, that fight um, was in uh, Peru. Um, Daniel Atta, who's a tough, tough guy who rarely gets stopped, uh, at least uh, uh, maybe now that he's been around a long time. But um, he stopped Daniel Atta in three rounds uh, in, J- in July of last year. So those are his two notable fights. How do I see this one going? Well, I, I think it's going to be an entertaining fight. 
uh, on ESPN. If you recall, uh, this was uh, uh, one of those uh, weekends that they had to uh, uh, do some uh, shuffling and, and getting uh, uh, replacements. Their main event had dropped out. But uh, with all that said, I'm taking Jonathan Masiello. I think he's uh, going to be uh, a showcase fight for him, and we're going to want to see more after tonight. I, I really think it's going to be a good one. Now, the last two fights are on the China card, and both are excellent fights. Brian Valoria is taking on uh, Juan Francisco Estrada. That's had a guy from ESPN. He's in Juan Francisco Estrada. He's a former world title challenger, and uh, uh, that was in his last fight. He fought Roman Gonzalez for the uh, uh, junior flyweight world title and went 12 with him, uh, but uh, came up short. He's uh, only 22 years old. He's ranked number 16 as a flyweight. His record, 22 wins, 18 coming by knockout, and uh, he's got two losses never uh, being stopped. The one loss was, like I said, against the undefeated world champion Roman Gonzalez uh, when he fought him undefeated, and his other loss came at the hands of, uh, at the time, once beaten uh, Juan Carlos Sanchez. He does have some uh, decent wins over experienced fighters, um, and uh, he steps in, uh, unfortunately, with one of... uh, uh, the division's best in Brian Valora. Not only is he a former world junior flyweight champion, but he's currently uh, considered as the flyweight world champion, even though he holds uh, the WBO flyweight belt and the WBA's super flyweight belt because uh, in his last fight uh, he had beaten uh, uh, Hernan Marquez, uh, who had uh, uh, the uh, flyweight belt in the WBA, and uh, now... Uh, um, you know, they elevate that to super, and, uh, you know, so he ends up with the uh, flyweight belt, super flyweight belt, whatever you want to call it. Super world flyweight belt is the way they word it. His record, 32 wins, 19 come by knockout. He's got three losses, only stopped once. He's ranked number one as a flyweight in the world by the computers, 32 years old, five foot four, 66-inch reach, 279 rounds uh, as a pro with a 51% knockout ratio. Uh, I love the Hawaiian punch. Uh, I think he's uh, back on track. He's got some great wins uh, in his last several fights. Giovanni Segura, Omar Nino Romero, and, of course, uh, Hernan uh, Little Tyson Marquez stopping him in 10. I'm picking Brian Ballora to keep uh, his uh, uh, dominance uh, of the uh, uh, flyweight division uh, going. And finally, the last fight, uh, Rocky Martinez, Roman Rocky Martinez, going up against a young gun, Diego Magladeno. Um, Diego Magladeno, it's his first shot at a world title. He's undefeated, 23 wins, no losses, nine of his wins coming by knockout. He's uh, ranked number 15 by the computer. He's only 26 years old, five foot six, 69 inch reach, 130 rounds as a pro with a 39% uh, percent knockout uh, percentage. Uh, his last eight fights, eight, count them, were all against good opposition Check him out. Carlos uh, Oliveira, 25 and 1. Derek Campos, 20 and 9. Marco, uh, Marcos Leano Yuminguez, 18 and 2. Gilberto Sanchez Leon, 31 and 8, with a couple of draws. Alejandro Perez, 15 and 2. Emmanuel Lucero, 26 and 7. Fernando Beltran, 36 and 7. Antonio Davis, 29 and 7. He's improved, he's knocking people out. Um, listen, I love this kid. He's a great kid. I've gotten to meet him personally. He can fight. One issue, he's never fought outside of the U.S. at all, ever. And of his 23 fights, only two have been outside of his home state of Nevada, and only one of those has been outside of Vegas. So, uh, um, you know, I, you know, I, we'll see. He's going to China, and he steps in with Rocky Martinez, who's traveled all over the world to fight. He's currently the WBO Super Featherweight Champion. He's ranked number 13th. By the super uh, by the computer in the super featherweight division, he's thirty years old, sixty seven inch reach, five foot eight, hundred ninety two rounds of pro with a fifty five percent knockout ratio. His last fight was a controversial one against Juan Carlos Burgos, where he got a draw, was able to keep his uh, his title. He's got some uh, impressive wins over Miguel Beltran, Daniel Atara, the Ricky Burns loss. I was the one that predicted that. This guy's a a, a real uh, fighter. Nicky Cook wins over Walter Estrada, big big wins. Uh, he's fought some tough guys. We all know how he fights. Uh, he comes at you and uh, wants to make it a fight. He, he, he likes to, to get in there with you and mix it up. Um, how's this fight going to go? You know, it, it's, it's a tough one. It's a tough one to pick. And, and my heart tells me, um, well, my brains tell me that Rocky Martinez is going to be too much for uh, 
uh, Diego Magladeno. But my heart tells me that this kid, it's his time. Boxing needs Diego Magladeno. Nothing against Rocky Martinez, but we need a changing of the guard. We need a young face uh, in, in boxing like Magladeno, who, who keeps his nose clean. He, he and his brother are a breath of fresh air uh, for, uh, for boxing and, and his trainer. Um, it, it does a great job. We had him when we were out in Vegas. Uh, I, I'm going with the underdog. I'm taking Diego Magladeno in this one. Uh, so my picks are Jonathan Macielo, Diego Magladeno, uh, Brian Valora, and uh, Azua Augustuma. Azia Augustuma. Those are the fights that I'm picking uh, for this weekend. So uh, enjoy them, and uh, good luck to everybody that's in the challenge. Wake up. It's time for the Ooh. It's Too Early for a Trivia Question. Question. Today's It's Too Early for a Trivia Question. Question is being brought to us by Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York. Check them out uh, on our website, www.billycboxing.com. Click one of the Gleason's Gym banners or give them a call, 718-797-2872. Tell them you heard about uh, Brooklyn and Manhattan and Jersey Shore, all locations for Gleason's on the Billy C. Show. And demand a Billy C. discount when you sign up for this year's uh, Boxing Fantasy Camp, uh, August 22nd through the 25th. Uh, as soon as you sign up, drop me an email, Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T A L K I N B O X I N G dot com, and I will uh, get uh, you on the list to uh, follow you around and, and document your experience at the Boxing Fantasy Camp this year from Gleason's. Call them right now, 718 797 2872. Today's uh, trivia question it's being uh, supplied to us by the trivia question guru himself, Henry Haskup. Uh, yesterday's question was, which world champion has the longest knockout streak in history? Listen, man, we had tons and tons of answers uh, uh, over the last uh, several days, and I actually got two correct answers yesterday, uh, but one was the first one. Matt Barnes from Queens, and wants to know that uh, he's a Mets and Jet fan. All right, Matthew, uh, good stuff there. He knew that uh, um, Rodolfo Gonzalez, who was a WBC lightweight champion, had 33 straight knockouts from 1959 to 1961. And for all of those that guessed Wilfredo Gomez, you were close. He had 32. So congratulations to Matt. Send me your email address. I mean, uh, send me your uh, mailing address, and I'll send you the prize. Today's It's Too Early for a Trivia Question question is, which former world champion suffered the most consecutive knockout or Technical knockout defeats. Which world champion suffered the most consecutive KO or TKO defeats? If you know that answer, email me, Billy at Talkin' Boxing, T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-X-I-N-G dot com. This day in boxing history. And finally, on this day, April 5th, back in uh, 1991, Victor Cordoba knocks out Chris Tizio in the ninth round to win the WBA World Super Middleweight title, uh, and that took place in France. Also on April 5th in 2003, Marcus Beyer wins a 12-round decision over Eric Lucas to regain the WBC World Super Middleweight title, and that took place on this day in Germany. Uh, and uh, listen, man, we look forward to you uh, tuning in to the fight Saturday on LDL TV. Uh, and then next week uh, on uh, LDL TV as well. We will not be doing uh, uh, live shows anywhere next week uh, except on Fight Now. So you got to check out Fight Now. Now's the time to call and get it. I do have one other thing to say. You, you know what it is, right? <laughs> Make sure you tune in to uh, the Talking Boxing with Billy C show every day. And there's one channel to get it on, and that's uh, the Fight Now channel. That's right. For all the information about the Fight Now, you can find it on the website, www.fightnow.com. Mix you up a little bit today, huh? Huh? Make sure you tune in. Call your uh, television provider. Tell them that you want Fight Now right now. Tell them you want to request the channel. That's what you need to do. Put it on the list. Hey, we'll see you next week, man. Ciao, baby. <laughs>